Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Jones, the Managing Director of Impact Minerals Limited, listed on the Australian Stock Exchange under code IPT. We are currently coming to the end of a pre-feasibility study on a very unique deposit here in Western Australia, where we're looking to mine, clay, and turn it into high-purity alumina. It's a very exciting project, and we're here today to talk about it. Brilliant. Okay. I'm Mike, I see you, um, and even better to get an update from you, high-purity alumina. We've talked in the past about what it is and what it's going to be used for, a very sort of technical metal, which we are going to get into today. But first, we'll, we'll start with a, some good news. You've received a grant from the government. Tell me about that. We did indeed, yeah. So two weeks ago, we announced we had won a $2.9 million grant towards a project that uh, total value is about uh, six and a half million. So it was a 45% direct cash contribution to that project. And that is a, an R&D project together with our engineering company, CPC Engineering, and also Edith Cowan University here in, uh, in Perth in Western Australia to basically look at uh, sustainable production of, of HPA, which is a, a glamorous way of looking at the, uh, the entire development stream from the mining to the processing uh, to the uh, end, end uses. And for those who aren't aware, HPA is a critical mineral, both in Australia, it's listed on the, on the list, uh, critical minerals in Australia, Europe, and uh, in America. And so this is the first time that we've accessed uh, federal uh, grant money for, uh, for our project, and we believe that's a, a great validation. And, and that three-way collaboration has really come about from the work that we've been doing in the, uh, in the pre-feasibility study, because it turns out that uh, like any high-purity product, there's uh, always a few tips and tricks that you learn along the way in terms of what's required to get to that end product. So look, fantastic outcome, and uh, we're going to be, uh, the big thing is at the end of this study, over a two to three year period, we'll actually be at DFS level um, for virtually everything to do with the project. So uh, it's a great outcome. Okay, um, so you, but you're, you're about to put out a PFS though, aren't you? That's right, pre-feasibility. That's pre. I thought you said DFS a second ago. Okay, a P PFS. Okay. Well, let's let's talk about those tr uh, tricks and um, uh, learnings a lot along the way because uh, even people um, you know like um, Iluka you know don't always get it right and they've they've been out a, a while and you, you're kind of newcomer to all of this, aim for this uh, for an HPA um, target of yours. So. Well, what have you learned? Tell me that. <laughs> Look, so the process of purification is all is always tricky. Uh, no matter which you know which product you're in, whether it's manganese or you know rare earths, it's always about the purification extraction of the specific uh, element or elements that uh, you know that you need. And in the high purity space for alumina, there, there's really two ways of doing it. There's a solvent extraction process, and that's been the really big success of Alpha HPA, a billion dollar market cap. And then many others have been trying an acid leach, in particular hydrochloric acid leaching. And uh, none of those have actually become commercial yet. Uh, some of them are still going. It's taken them a long time. And it turns out that as you do the work, that there's actually quite large volumes of acid needed to produce the product. So unless you can regenerate your acid and purify it, it's a case of none of those projects will ever basically get off the books and you know, off, the, uh, uh, off the floor, in, uh, in my view. And that was something that we learned, you know, along the way. So as it turns out, this research project is very much centered around membrane technology, which we can use in multiple places in the process flow diagram, uh, in a number of places in the circuit, and also in terms of acid regeneration, and also cleaning up the, uh, you know, the wastewater. So that's been a huge uh, tick for us. Uh, now, we've actually solved the problem of this acid regeneration at the scale of the, the PFS and the detail of the PFS, and, and we believe that that will flow through to the definitive feasibility studies on the back of this uh, research project. So, uh, you know, an absolutely great outcome. So when you say you've solved for it, because obviously acid, very expensive part of the process, and obviously uh, if you're consuming too much, it, it, it really could be sort of terminal for any, any project. And if I reference Iluca and Vale, you know, they think they pulled out a project in Brazil as a result of not being able to solve the problem technically. So if you've done that with your own project, tell me, well, tell me more, tell me more why, as to why the economics, when you put the PFS at, will be okay. So the, uh, for those who have followed the story or haven't followed the story, 
we initially started with a sulfuric acid uh, process, uh, which was um, a yeah, more readily available acid. There were a few problems in the back end of that with volumes of uh, fertilizer product, et cetera, et cetera, that we, uh, that we were producing. But in the meantime, we'd been working on this second process, which is a, an alkaline leach to start off with, or pre-treatment as we call it, and then an acid treatment at the back end. And so that has actually been very successful and is the basis of the, of the pre-feasibility study. So we did announce a couple of months ago that we'd made the decision to go with this alkaline pre-treatment and then the HCL at the back end. So the alkaline pre-treatment, uh, basically we just dig up the clay. So those who haven't followed the story, we're just going to dig up the top two metres of a salt lake, salt pan about 500 kilometres uh, east of Perth in through here. We're going to bring it into Perth, build the process plant, and that's uh, where we're going to produce the HPA. So it's just raw clay, and it goes into this alkaline leach, and it actually spits out very high-quality potash as the first byproduct. Now, I just want to be clear, that's not brine that's coming from the lake. It's actually the clay. There's obviously a lot of the brine producers uh, for potash uh, failed in, in W8. It's nothing like that. Uh, we mix a chemical with the clay, and potash comes out of the side. So what we're left with is actually a volume of material that's actually only half what we start up. And so immediately the acid requirement is half of what the, uh, all of our competitors are using HCL use. And at that in terms of volume for volume production of, uh, of HPA. Now that might sound a little bit technical, but what that does, it halves the input costs straight away. Uh, and as a result, we're able to cost effectively recycle the, uh, the acid just using standard things such as evaporators and then distillers. So that's the way that you that uh, you often clean up a lot of the a lot of the acid, but this research project now so that and that works in its own right with its economics. So that's that's a great outcome. So the research project uh, in terms of this membrane technology, as I said, can be fitted in various places in this system, but in particular in the acid regeneration, it's going to give us a much more cost effective way of regenerating our acid. Uh, we believe that will contribute significantly again to the low operating costs for the entire project. Okay, so well, I guess we'll look forward to the PFS coming out um, on the economics side. Has it, let's talk about the outputs though. You know, you, we've talked in the past about heading, heading up this kind of 4N target, which in terms of purity, you know, is up to 99.998%, properly high, high, um, high grade. What does this new process still hit that um, purity level? It does, yes. So uh, there's uh, you know things you learn along the way. Certainly as a, as a geologist uh, trying to uh, trying to build a processing plant. So obviously things working on the, at the lab scale or bench scale, you know, are very different to scale you know, to a massive plant. In particular, when you've got this high purity uh, going on. You, know, you need specialized gear. It needs a lot of process control, and you know you become basically a specialty chemicals company at that point, um, where it's uh, it's all about fine control on the way that the uh, the reagents are reacting through the uh, you know through the entire system. So yes, uh, so the mass flow balance, uh, which does a calculation based on our test work, is giving us uh, four nines uh, as a product in the large scale plant, ten thousand tons per annum, but. Uh, I'm, I've been around way too long to uh, imagine that we're just going to go from a uh, you know a bench scale to a 10,000 ton per annum plant in, in one hit. So the research project will allow us to basically uh, fund the pilot plant, which will be I don't know pick a figure a ton a week something like that. Um, and that we've uh, we've already put our hands on uh, half of a half of a pilot plant that's sitting in some boxes for that was uh, designed for another another purpose. And we'll get that going. And so that pilot plant should be up and running hopefully by the middle of next year. Uh, if you look to the plans that we put out previously, we were sort of looking to get to demonstration scale plant, which we do one after that, sort of in late 26, 27. And that's all still on schedule. And so the pilot plant will come in, we'll test that, and then we'll scale up again uh, before going to the big, uh, you know, the, the the big plant scale, so uh, we should have hopefully ironed out a lot of the issues by then. Right, and and what's it going to take to be able to kind of move those plants forward? Obviously, Aussie markets a little bit quiet at the moment. Uh, we'll it'll be interesting to see if there's any kind of ripple effects from the US elections on you as a kind of critical mineral story um, in in Australia, but. 
funding for things like that, is that still going to be available? Um, because and, and, and the, the context of this question is from conversations post the US election is there's a there's a kind of um, but how would I phrase it? The whole green agenda may be taking a back seat in the US. Will that sort of be will that sort of have some knock on effect here um, in Australia? Or do you think it's going to be you know business as usual and um, your your kind of metal your your product won't be impacted? Look, I definitely think it won't be impacted. I mean, regardless of the energy transition, you know, it's clear that incandescent light globes, for example, you know, are on the way out. Right? It's just more efficient, you know, and quicker and easier to produce an LED. And uh, you know, I don't know some of some of my recent presentations, but I've been showing pictures of the Las Vegas dome. You know, which has got you know 1.8 billion LEDs on it, and then just yesterday somebody posted something. Um, there's a 280 um, uh, yeah, meter long LED screen for a concert that Adele was doing, you know, in Germany. Um, and so every LED has a sapphire wafer behind it, which has been made out of HPA. All right, so that that that's a trend that's just going to continue regardless of uh, whether you know there's a the uh, green agendas uh, turned down or uh, you know or not. Uh, it's also used in you know, semiconductor, proper semiconductors, um, and uh, all sorts of wide other uses: medical ceramics, optic, uh, optics, sapphire glass. Uh, those are the big, those are the big areas, the big growth areas. Uh, it is used in the battery separators. That, but look, there are a few competitors coming into that market, um, in particular in China, other products, but they can't be used in the LED. So look, we're very focused on the, the large market. We believe we're going to be in the lowest cost quartile still, if not the lowest cost producer globally, and uh, and so it's it's all about getting in the bulk market and uh, and putting our foot into uh, into the door. And the other thing we're looking at uh, is we got applications in at the moment for other grants to look at you know trying to perhaps develop some of our own uses of, of HPA, you know, in the broader sense. So uh, yeah, it's um, as as. You can't build a business stealing customers off, uh, you know, off other people. It's uh, it'd be good if you could come up with your own niche, and, uh, and such as and... such as I'm interested. Sorry, such as what? Uh, you know, I would. Oh, sorry, I would have to kill you if uh, if I was. To oh, tell really? You. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Look, okay. Okay. Well, look. Okay. In which case, I can't put a value on that. I don't. If, if I don't know what it is, I can't understand it. But, but let's stick with it. Cool that's market. Very, um, the, that's very much an R and D, you know, program. Uh, you know, for us. Right. To be okay. Able. Long ways away. Right now, I'm focused on can you deliver it into kind of a um, into, into contracts which you feel that you can you can get. Um, but in your understand, you guys obviously like you know you you bolstered the team etc. Um, recently. Do you think that was was? Do you understand the sort of type of team that you're going to have to put in place? Because you talk about learnings. Technically, there's going to be probably learnings in terms of market approach as well. So you know, are you sort of on that learning curve now? Yeah, definitely. And uh, we have actually had a bit of a, a change of team as the uh, you know as the projects developed, and we've realised that we needed you know other skills to uh, you know to come in and uh, just have new feasibility study manager start for and her. Uh, he's actually managing another high purity project at the moment because it, it's a different set of problems that you have to find in the high purity sector compared to say you know building a frost flotation you know for a base metal project. It's uh, it's a, a very different business uh, to be in. And then we've got two key uh, people now in the the technical side and the process engineering it actually it turns out it's a husband and wife team so um our engineering company tpc engineering uh eugenia fegan she has helped design the uh, the plant that we've got for the pre-feasibility study uh she actually has already built uh, an hpa pilot plant um for another another method and then her uh, husband scott uh, scott fegan um they are both ex alpoa process chemical engineers and process engineers and, and the depth of knowledge that that um, that they'd have you know, in building plants um, it, it, for the aluminum business in particular, right through from uh, you know leaching, layer process, alcination at the back end, and uh, it's like you know really feel I've got the right people on the team for this uh, you know for this uh, next level. 
And uh, in terms of the marketing, um, we've also recently employed uh, ex-marketing guy and commercial manager for Tianchi Lithium. He's based here in, in, in Australia. So Tianchi Lithium own the majority of the Greenbushes Lithium Bank. And so uh, Joseph Casella, he's on board now. Uh, he's formulating our entire marketing strategy. Now, that will really come into play in the middle of next year once our pilot plant has built, been built. We've been very reliably informed that, I mean, basically until we've got a pilot plant, no one's going to take it seriously in terms of, you know, being able to deliver, you know, product at a consistent quality over a consistent period of time. And so uh, we have a little bit of a time up the sleeve to, uh, to be able to develop that. As I say, in terms of demand, the you know, people's society, it's all about the offtake. It is. Uh, looking at Alpha HPA, you know, they have clearly indicated in the ASX announcements that whilst they're building a 10,000 ton barrel plant, they've actually received indicative interest for 30,000 tons of, uh, you know, of HPA. So, you know, I, I truly believe that, uh, you know, if we build it, they're going to come. And uh, we've just got to get to that stage. And make sure that all our ducks in a row before we start, you know, start going out there and um, you know, ringing the bell for customers. Okay, well, yeah, I, I you know, I have different views about build it and they shall come. It's a, that's which is was partly what I'm asking the next question, which is about you know timing timing the market and understanding the size of the market in in a kind of competitive uh, arena. So, do you do you feel that the the because we talked in the past about the kind of the size of the market and the growth potential for the market and and you know you've chosen a, a, you know a, a product uh, or you know products which you feel that one you can deliver um, and two into a market that that wants it and if they if you are able to get those contracts that they're going to be high margin so that that all makes sense but um, with regards to you know, being able to kind of get those contracts, you're going to need to demonstrate, as I say, the things that you're laying out for the next 12 months or so. Um, what's the point where you kind of enter sensible discussions with potential buyers and understand precisely what, what their needs are? You know, and I think, and, and, you, and did you say you have got that person on board already? Yeah. So, um, so Joseph's developing strategy. So we're doing a full research on, you know, what the current, Product specifications are that are publicly available across you know the other handful of the, you know of HPA uh, providers and ceramic providers, and we're not restricting ourselves to the four end space uh, exclusively or five end. There is actually quite significant margins to be made in some of the three end space. You know, not quite as pure. Um, and also, we've been talking to a number of ceramic producers. Uh, you know, as potential to supply them with, uh, you know, material that they can turn into 4N with their calcining skills, et cetera. So there's a, there's a wide variety of things uh, that will come out of the, uh, of the work that, uh, that Joseph's doing. So, so in terms of timing, so we're looking at sort of quarter three, uh, you know, next year will be the, the, the real start of that, uh, that process. Hopefully the pilot plant will be up and, you know, up and running at that point. And then we're in a position to offer, you know, people material consistently in reasonable quantities uh, to uh, to get through the qualification periods. Right, okay. So, so it sounds like um, a, a lot of lot of work coming up. And, you, you know, I've just been through, kind of, I say, this the kind of learning curve. Um, hopefully no more learnings to be – well, no, you always want to learn, but hopefully no more challenges um, ahead. Um, Mike, appreciate the the update there. Um, and hopefully, well, we'll start to see people maybe appreciating – you know, where you sit in the mix and also the timing a little bit better. So thanks for your time today. Good. No problem, mate.